Section 8.4, Margin of Error and Sample Size. So on this example that we're going to start off with, we're just continuing on from the confidence interval that we just did on the previous page. Let's go ahead and read it. A 99% confidence interval for the true mean duration of all the calls made by a company's customers was found to be from, from 3.510 to 4.234 minutes. The margin of error in that study was 0.362 minutes. Determine the sample size required so that the margin of error will be at most 0.25 minutes and recall from that previous problem that S was 4.0539 and our T star was 2.586. And remember that the T star comes from the confidence level. All right, so what they're basically saying here is that even though we had a margin of error of 0.362 minutes, that was not good enough, that they wish the margin of error was lower, as low as uh, 0.25 minutes or smaller than that, that that would be the biggest margin of error that would be acceptable. So what we want to do is try and figure out the sample size for that. So I'm going to start off by writing down the margin of error formula. Now your margin of error is always the plus or minus piece. And on this type of problem, that would be T star times S over root N. And in this situation, they're giving us a value right here of E. And we know the values of S and T star. And they want us to figure out the sample size, right? Determine the sample size. That's what they're asking us to do. So I would want to plug those three in and solve for N. But uh, in reality, I don't want to actually have to do that over and over again, the algebra piece. So I'm going to do that um, with all the letters there to come up with a formula that can be used for this purpose. So when we have a fraction, uh, or sorry, an equation that contains fractions, usually the first thing we want to do is multiply by the common denominator to go ahead and clear those fractions off. So if I multiply both sides by root n, that would cancel over here. And so then where would that put us? Uh, those would have canceled on this side. We'd have root n times e equals t star times s. And I'm trying to get this n by itself. So the next algebra step would be to divide both sides by e. And that would cause the e to cancel out. And then I would have root n by itself. So at that point, I'm now at root n equals t star times s over e. And I want to get rid of that square root. And the opposite of taking the square root of something would be to square it. So I would then square both sides. And the square and the square root would cancel. And I would come up with a new formula, which is that n would be equal to t star times s over e. And that would all be squared. And that formula is the one that I want to use on this problem to work out what sample size I would need to get that margin of error that they're requesting. So let me go ahead and kind of break that off. There was the algebra that we only have to do just this one time. And now here's the kind of work that you'd show on the homework. N would be T star, which up here we were reminded that that was 2.586. And then I would multiply that times the S, which we were given on that problem of 4.0539. And I would divide all of that by the margin of error that they want. And they want a margin of error of at most 0.25 minutes. That is the one place where you have to be really careful here. Sometimes people will plug in the margin of error of 0.362. And that was the margin of error that we had previously. You want to make sure you're plugging in the margin of error that we want right now. And then we'll go to the calculator and we'll see how that comes out. You go ahead and slide all this over and bring in the calculator. So... All of this goes in parentheses and then square on the outside. So 2.586 times 4.0539. Don't end the parentheses yet. Divided by 0 0.25. Now all of that is in parentheses, so I end it and I can square and all of that will get squared. So I get 1758.42. And if I was to round that to the nearest integer, that would be 1758. But you might remember from the previous sections that when you're trying to figure out sample size you would always rather have a sample size that's too big than a sample size that's too small so we always round this up so I'm going to say that we should use n is 1759 that's an awfully big sample size you might even be a little surprised by that but you do need to keep in mind that on that previous problem 
we had a sample size of 837 and yet that wasn't good enough. It produced a margin of error too big. So we shouldn't be surprised since we need a sample size bigger than 837 to get something like this. Alright, so let's make a few notes on that. One of them would be that the formula that we just used for sample size is that n equals t star times s over e all squared and that you should always round n up to the next whole number even if it would be closer to round down we always round up in this scenario. Alright and that kind of takes care of what we just did in our example but there is another situation that can arise uh, when we plug the s into that spot uh, that's because we had a sample from the previous example that produced that standard deviation but if you think about this scenario where you're trying to figure out sample size it, it doesn't actually make sense to have S already because that implies you have a sample already and this is supposed to be work that we do before the study takes place so what do you do in that situation uh, if you don't have S and the answer is if you went back to this uh, original formula for margin of error this should have been a sigma right here and this should have been a z-score but we didn't know sigma so we put in s and that created the need for the t so what we're going to do is go back to that scenario and say okay let's use a sigma and a z-score together instead of an s and a t but we don't know the value of sigma either so we're going to take a guess at it and you might remember we did the uh, p guess in section 8.2 so that's kind of similar here and now we need a strategy for how do you guess at sigma and so that's all taken care of here in the second note if no value of s is known then go ahead and use a guess for sigma and the way we're going to get that guess is we're going to take a guess at the max and the min subtract those from each other and divide by four and then we'll use this formula and this tends to overestimate the size of sigma we've built a formula that in our guessing strategy tends to give us an answer that's a little too big because if we do that we'll get an n that's too big and we'd rather have an n that's too big than too small just real quick on the logic here for the max minus min we're going basically with the idea of the expected range saying that your max you might expect to be two standard deviations above the mean and your minimum you might expect to be about two standard deviations below the mean so if the max is two above and the min is two below then the two are about four standard deviations apart from each other so when you divide out that four you're left with roughly the standard deviation and again that's just a, a guessing method but that is often what we have to do when we're trying to figure out sample size and so just a quick note here that both of those are also guesses so just a quick example of how this might go down let's suppose that you were going to do a problem about um, gas prices and you're trying to figure out the sample size you need you might think about what is my guess for the maximum and perhaps the most expensive price that you've seen recently was four dollars and nineteen cents and then you think about well what was the cheapest price I've seen anywhere and maybe that cheapest price was three dollars and eighty five cents so you're just kind of thinking about what is my guess of the min and max just based on my experience and then you could use that and say okay then my guess at the standard deviation would be 4.19 minus 3.85 divided by 4 and you could go to the calculator and get your estimate so it's just a guess but at least it gives us a starting place on what type sample size we should use roughly the size of it and it tends to be a process that uh, while it puts us in the right ballpark usually creates a sample size a little bigger than we need and that's a that's kind of the good type of error to have a sample size that's a little too big instead of a little too small alright that wraps up section 8.4